The first time I was here, we announced a $25 million round. Right. Uh, what was the original valuation? The original valuation was $150 million for that, that right. first round. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to say that today we're, we're announcing a, a $400 million round, which will allow us to accelerate our vision of 20% market share in the top 20 cities by 2020. And we're going to announce in the months ahead our first international city. Right. And you got a big push, we should say, from SoftBank as yeah. well, because they've been a big supporter of, of yours and backer of, of all this. Um, I want to talk about real estate prices and what's going on across the country. But just on your business in particular, mm. it is growing. Um, exponentially, but growing uh, at a cost as well. And I just wanted you to talk about that because uh, there's been a number of different articles about how you're growing. You're spending a lot of money. I don't want to say you're becoming a roll up, but to, to actually break into a lot of these markets, you're having to basically buy lots of other competitors out effectively or try to pick off their people. And so we're growing more organically still, hiring agents one by one than um, mergers. Right. But we have started an acquisition strategy over the last you know, six to eight months. Uh, and you, know, you, you can't buy companies and you can't buy people. They have to want to be part of your vision. And they're coming here because they right. believe we can create the future of this industry. The only reason I ask it is, is when, we first, when you first started, first of all, it was, it was really more focused. It felt like it was more focused as a technology company. It was going to help renters, if you remember. I mean, you've really pivoted in many ways. And it almost feels like you're going to become long term just one of the, the largest uh, straight up real estate agencies in the country. In, in, in a more classic way, backed by technology. But is, is that a different sort of flip in terms of what the model looks like? Yeah, so there, there are two million agents in this country. They're the largest group of entrepreneurs in this country. We have 7,000 agents, 7,000 small business owners that rely on us every day. And they're using our technology at the same usage rates of Twitter. So 92% right. of people use it every day. Uh, the foundation of Compass today is technology right. and will only continue to be more so in the future. Okay, so real estate prices. We're here in New York City. <laughs> yeah. And you look at the stock market, you, look, you hear about everything going so, so, so great economically, mm -hmm. and yet real, and real estate prices in the city are getting knocked down. What is happening? Is this salt? Is this something else? What's, what's, the, what's your calculus for what's happening here? So you get the, the Fed raised interest rates yesterday, and right. a, a stat which is important to, to keep in mind is in the last few weeks, there have been 800 price drops in New York City alone. And that's more than any point in the last 12 years. But it has been a 12-year cycle. I mean, that's right. a, a, you know, there are, things do have to turn. Okay, this so this is just the this pendulum swinging. It's the time pendulum to has to swing down. at some point. But and swing. is that happening in other places though too? In, in we're in over 80 cities across the country with yep. 7,000 agents. Uh, I almost every agent that I speak to says the market is softening. Okay, so but help predict it, if you will. What are we talking about here? I mean, are we talking about? 5% drop, a 10% drop, a 20% drop to, to, to actually get to some form of an equilibrium? We're seeing 5 to 10%. 5 to 10%. And is that, a, and you think that's a function of the Fed, or do you think there's a, that's why I said, is there a salt component to this? Is it something else happening here? Yeah, I, I think. And yeah. why is that happening at the same time that everything else is supposed to be going so, so gangbusters? Yeah, I, I think it's just general uncertainty and people feeling that the prices have gone up so high over the course of the last 12 years, they don't want to, they don't want to buy at the top of the market. And, and it's also an affordability factor, too, in a number of these cities where the prices are right. so high that a lot of people that are at the sweet rent. spot in the market right. wind up renting instead of buying. And they've grown, and prices have grown faster than income. Right. right. So this is an issue I don't know if we should be worried about or thinking about more than we do, because we have not talked about what's happening in real estate prices and whether that can actually trans Talk about consumer confidence and all of those we things. We always hear it's supply. We always hear it's supply. Right, but when you right. get to a point where people start to say, you know what, actually, I can't actually get out of my house at par or whatever it's going to be, unless you think that everything's just run up and, and that's th that everybody was already in or sort of you know on this train, then they might actually not spend the way they thought. You got to do the they, rental. If, the, if this part of the, sort the of rental calculation starts, too, starts to permeate the psychology, is rent of what's going, going up on. or down? Rent's not weakening. No, rent is saying in New York City relatively flat. That's where we focus more on, on rentals. So rent, rent, yeah. yeah, that can be more attractive for for years at a time, right? Yeah. You have to. It's a complex. It also gives flexibility to individuals if they right. rent. They right. can make a decision. They might not be staying where they right. are today. In New York, you always think, though, I'm going to buy it for X and it's going to be worth 2X, like in five years. So all my rent's covered. I did, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, it's like you're living free. But that doesn't always work. Sometimes you make more money with rent, yeah. right? Or you lose less. Any markets you really like? I'm assuming Denver's still growing. Yeah, so I still, I still like Austin. I like Denver. I still like Seattle. I yeah. still like San Francisco because of job growth. But the hottest city Vegas. in the country yeah. is Nashville. Nashville? <laughs> Nashville. 
And it's the healthcare capital of the world. Yeah. Healthcare <laughs> culture. Think about everything yeah. you liked about Austin in the, in, over the last decade. You, th you think you like about Brooklyn. Right. But it, why'd they just it, figure that out? That's been the case with Nashville for a long time. Food is right. great. Restaurants. Area. I was just Restaurants there. Restaurants are yeah, great. Food, Vanderbilt, food yeah. and musicians. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of people from L.A. and New York and San Francisco are moving there and getting second homes. Okay, so what's yeah. the market? You what's the market that you wouldn't touch right now? It's a good question. I, the market that I would not touch, or at least. You know, you'd, you'd I would say certain second home markets. Okay. Uh, yeah, certain second home markets have just been too elevated. Hmm. You, want, you want to mention them by name? It's important for me to support the markets that we're in. <laughs> <laughs> I may get a backlash from our agents, and they're relying on us. Okay. Another yeah. fast growth market is Reno, because there's a lot of Californians that can move up there. You know, Google yeah. has moved up there, Apple's moved up there, Tesla's moved up there. Yeah. Let's hear about Vegas, yeah. too. Kramer's always right. talking about Las Vegas. Vegas isn't hot? Yeah, Vegas is hot. That's not a market we're in yet. We're going to launch it next year. Oh, you are? Okay, yeah. you're just not there yet. Yeah.